Hi everybody. Happy May Day. Today's May 1st. It's Friday. We're in a new month. Last time I saw it, it was March. We haven't seen each other all of April and now we're at the beginning of May. And May Day is a holiday in a lot of places in the world and so we're going to talk about that a little bit today. Um, and I'm going to do a craft with you today, which I haven't done on our YouTube video yet. But before we start, let's say our prayers. Everybody do it with me. I want to hear you all the way over here at my house. You ready? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you all my prayers, works, joys, and sufferings of this day. For all the intentions of your Sacred Heart, in union with the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world, to make up for my sins, for the needs of all those for whom we pray, for the unity of all Christians, and especially for the intentions of our Holy Father, the Pope. Amen. Sacred Heart of Jesus, we love you. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. St. John Newman, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Put your hand on your heart and say our pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And our student mission statement is to serve God with loving hearts, joyfully embrace our Catholic faith, and nurture individual and academic excellence. And as we always say, go Mustangs! Can't wait till we can do that again together. All right, so I mentioned that it is May Day, May 1st. We're in a new month. It's a very special month. It's Mary's month. So we do a lot of Hail Marys. So there'll be a May crowning in a week. And I'll talk about that on Blooms next week. So there's a lot of things going on in May. And plus, it's just the last month of school. It's usually a very exciting week, month at school. So we'll start with a little. Th we started. Let's do our counting again. We started a new way to count. And that was twos. And those are in blue. Or we're on the 10 and the 20. They're the purples. And that's called skip counting. Counting by twos or your evens. And we're only going to go to 20. So let's see if we can do that together. Look at the blue or purple squares. Here, I'm going to move a little closer so that you can see it. You ready? I'm going to point. You ready? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. And that's twos to 20. We don't count to twos to 100, but it's a good idea to know your twos. Two, sometimes you might hear two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? And that's the even. So that's the twos. Two, four, six, eight. Then we just went on to 20. So try to practice your twos or skip counting. We skip a letter, say a letter, skip a letter, say a letter, skip a letter. Oh, sorry. Skip a number, say a number, skip a number, say a number. So skip counting is a way to count. Now, you should be practicing your fives. I know you know them without even looking. All right. And today we are also going to do um, a new letter. This letter, we do not have any friends with this letter in their, that starts their name. So um, I'm going to put up this letter. It, I believe, we, well, I'm just going to show it to you. Let me get these off. Ready? Who can think of a letter we haven't done yet? Some of you like to talk about this one. It's late in the year. What letter is this? I'm hearing you. What is it? Letter H. And I remember our alpha friend is Hattie Horse. Remember? Letter H. And H makes the sound. It's kind of a quiet sound. It can be in a blend, but we're not talking about that today. I'm going to give you some H words. Here's one you know how to spell because of a song we learned in During Valentine's. H-E-A-R-T. H-E-A-R-T. H E A R T and heart is its name. Oh. So that's how we spell heart. These are lowercase when we did it on our board for Valentine's. They were all capitals. H E A R T heart. Here's one. People like this in our little building set. What is that? And you might have a toolkit. Your dad or mom might have one. Hammer. Hammer. Maybe like that. And the last one, I say to raise your hand hand so that's heart hammer and hand I'm going to give you three more words and we will lend them here's one we probably did this more during winter time we would wear one of these some of you like to wear them in the spring and summer sound it out 
hat. Hat. A hat. Sometimes you might have a hat that you wear to keep your head warm. Here's another H word. It is not something we wear. It is, well, I sound it out and you'll know what it is. An animal. We usually have an animal, don't we? Here it is. Hen. That is a, a female or girl chicken. Hen. A hen lays eggs. Good. Here's our last one. This is a word that has to do with the sound an animal makes. I like this one. Ready? Here's another H one. Hiss. Hiss. What animal makes a hissing sound? A snake. Hiss. The word sounds like the sound. So, H. H. Heart. Hammer. Hand. Hat. Hen. And hiss. So that is letter H. Those will go up on our world word wall. I might try to take a picture of the word wall when everything is on it and send it to you so that you can have it to see what a word wall would have looked like at the end of the school year. All right, so um, it is May Day, and we were doing farm animals on Monday and Wednesday, and today I decided to switch to zoo animals, which have, would have been one of our themes. And I have a book that I think you're going to really like. It is a book that we have done. We have a book, a companion book. They go together. And do you remember the story, Commotion in the Ocean, when we were doing fish? for one of our religion lessons, Commotion in the Ocean. I have one that has to do with zoo animals, um, but um, this one is called, not Commotion in the Ocean, but Rumble in the Jungle. Now, we're not studying jungles, but these animals live in our zoos. We don't have a jungle in Knoxville, Tennessee, but we do have a zoo, and I think just about all the animals that we see in this story are in our zoo. So it's called Rumble in the Jungle. Okay. All right, Rumble in the Jungle by Gile Andre, and the pictures are by David Wojtovich. He's got a CZ in his name like me. So let's listen to Rumble in the Jungle. Nice picture here in the beginning. I'm going to try to give you more room there. There's a rumble in the jungle. There's a whisper in the trees. The animals are waking up and rustling in the leaves. The hippos at the water hole, the leopards in his lair. The chimpanzees are chattering and swinging everywhere. Some animals are frightening and some are sweet and kind. So let's go to the jungle now and see who we can find. And I think you can see all, oops, all kinds of animals in that picture. But they're just little pieces of them. Right. Here's our first animal. It was in the beginning too. Chimpanzee. It's great to be a chimpanzee swinging through the trees. And if we can't find nuts to eat, we munch each other's fleas. Chimpanzees like to pick bugs off each other and they eat them. Kind of gross, but they like it. What is this? The lion. The lion's the king of the jungle who quietly sits on his paws. But everyone quivers and shudders and shivers as soon as he opens his jaws. <sighs> That's kind of scary. All right. Elephant. We just did lettery and we did an elephant. This is a purple elephant. It's great to be an elephant, all big and fat and round, and wander through the jungle just elfing around. He's just being an elephant. They usually seem pretty happy, don't they? We know what this is, a zebra. I could, have been, I could have been gray like a donkey or brown like my cousin the mule, but instead I've got stripes, which my lady friend likes, since they make me look handsome and cool. He is pretty cool looking. When you see a zebra, it is pretty cool to see a zebra, isn't it? Nothing like it. This side says snake. The boa constrictor's a slippery snake who squashes then swallows his prey. He knows that it's not very friendly or kind, but they do taste much nicer that way. The giraffe. 
Some animals laugh at the gangly giraffe, but I hold my head up and feel proud. I don't really care when my head's in the air and my cheek's getting kissed by a cloud. He's so high that that cheek is kissing his cloud. No, the cheek, the cloud is ki kissing his cheek. Hippopotamus, that was in our tug of war book. Hello, I'm a big happy hippo. I sleep in the sun till I'm hot. And when I'm not sleeping, I mooch in the mud, which hippos like doing a lot. The mud keeps them cool. Rockada. When animals come to the river to drink, I watch for a minute or two. It's such a delight to behold such a sight that I can't resist chomping a few. It's going to eat. Who is getting out of the way there? One of our frog friends. Rhinoceros. The ravenous rhino is big, strong, and and tough, but his skin is all baggy and flappy, which means that there's plenty of room for his lunch, and that makes him terribly happy. Mm -hmm. The rhino's got some long, some like wrinkly skin. This might be one to get hard to guess. Looks a little like a deer. Gazelle. No one can run half as quickly as me, the galloping gorgeous gazelle. I can leap up so high that my horns touch the sky, and I'm awfully pretty as well. They are really pretty animals. It's kind of like deers, but they, they can jump really high. They may be a good basketball player. Here's one. Gorilla. The gorilla is big, black, and hairy, and the thing that he likes to do best is to look all ferocious and scary and wallop his great giant chest. And the little guy's going, pat, pat, pat. But this guy's going, thud, thud, thud. Come on, give me your gorilla. Uh... Leopard. If you meet a hungry leopard prowling through the night, make sure you call him sir and be incredibly polite. Leopards can be kind of mean. And then here's our friend the tiger. Look at his face. <sighs> Beware of the terrible tiger. You don't always know where he's when he's near. But his eyes shine like lights in the blackest of nights, and his growl makes you tremble with fear. Arr, now they're out at night. It's kind of like a cat. You see the cat's eyes can glow. So here's nighttime. The night has started falling, but the jungle never sleeps. The vultures circle slowly while the leopard softly sleeps. Softly creeps, sorry, while the leopard softly creeps. And if you listen quietly, you might, might just hear the growl of a hungry pair of panthers who are still out on the prowl. The lions and their little cubs are sleeping in their den. So let's leave them till tomorrow when we'll visit them again. You can visit them online. You can see zoos. And actually, I think the zoo is opening up maybe this weekend, maybe next week. So, Rumble in the Jungle. That's a good zoo book. It has a lot of our zoo animals. And it's kind of a cute story, just like Commotion in the Ocean that we read earlier this year. And that's a cute one. I really like that one. All right. So, thinking about animals, um, I'm going to do some animal songs with you. Today, I'm not going to do a song. I'm going to, I'm going to do something different. Uh, we'll do our ending song, our Easter song. But today, I'm going to talk about a, an, a project, an art project. And um, you might have some of these materials at home so that you can do this also. And it's a painting project for May Day. Um, I have some, I went to school and I just picked up a couple of paints, okay? I'm going to show them to you and I'll tell you what I did with them. I have the main colors, we call them the primary colors, um, and a white. So primary colors really are yellow, blue, and red. That's red. It looks kind of orange on my screen, but it's red. Um, and then I have white. That helps us blend a little. And then I do have one secondary color, but it's a good one. I have green. And that's all I have. I just brought them home. Um, we have big paints at school, and it's funny. I didn't think I'd ever use these, but these are coming in really handy. So I took my paint, and I have a paper plate, and I have to just put some paints. I started with the red, blue, yellow, and green, and then I added... I blended some to make purple, orange, and pink. These are, this is blue and red and white. This is red and white 
and orange and yellow. So I just made a bunch of colors. You can make more. You might have better paints than I do. But this is how I started on a paper plate. That's not my art project, but I'm taking materials from home to see if I can't make flowers, because May Day is really represented with baskets of flowers in a maypole. And we think about it. So then I went and found some materials from my house that I can paint with. I've got some plastic forks. A real forks will work too. I have some caps from some soda bottles. I have a pencil tip, which I think is a good one because it's small. A marker tip because this side is opened and that side is shut. I even have, which we've painted with Q-tips before. These are really good to paint with. And the last thing I have, which I have a lot lately, is a wine cork and a champagne cork. They're different sizes. Oh, these aren't the last things. I have one more thing. You can see if I hold it this way. They're a little different, but they're something you can paint with. And then the last thing, this is the last thing, is a Coke bottle. And the bottom of a Coke bottle is pretty cool. It's got kind of dots on it, bumps on it, and you'll see why I think that's going to work for our project today. And I just dropped, oh, there's my marker. So, I have just put a piece of paper on a clipboard so I can show you. And I'm going to try to do some flower art for you. My paint is here, and my items to paint with are in my lap. So I'm going to show you how you can take some materials from home and some paint and maybe make some pretty flowers. So first of all, I really like the way a fork, either a plastic fork or a real fork, kind of can look like a tulip flower. So I'm going to show you. Um, you might have done this in other classes because this is pretty simple. And I'm going to put some yellow paint on the back of my fork. Not the front, but the back. Let me show you. See, I put yellow paint. So I'm going to take it and press it to my paper. Now that one didn't turn out so great, but I'll do it again. So I have a yellow a yellow tulip sort of like. All right, so put that down. And then I think I want to make a flower that might have like a daisy look to it, which is I'm going to make a yellow center with my tip of my, see the tip of that made that there? And then I'm going to take this little cork, which is kind of easy to use, and I'm going to take in my orange paint, and I'm going to make petals around it. And I'm making a little mess because I'm trying to, if you did this on a table or outside, you might not make a mess, but I'm going to put five petals around my yellows, or four petals, five petals. And I'm just wasting, it's kind of a stamp, all right? A stamp. I'm trying to get my computer awake, so, oh, a little more orange. Okay, that looks kind of like a little flower, too. So now I'm going to take um, this Coke bottle. And this is really cool, the bottom of it. I'm going to try to get some paint on the whole bottom. We actually just used this up today. And if you look, you can see how that could look like a flower. I see one that's still side that doesn't have a lot of paint. There. And I can take that, put paint on it, put it right there. I'm going to rock it around to make sure I get everything. Oh, doesn't that look cool? That makes a cool flower. So that one, but it needs something in the middle, I think. So I'm going to take my, oh, that's too big. I'm going to take the middle of this cork. And maybe give it a red center. All right. There we go. See how pretty that turned out? Now I'm going to try one more, I think, tulip, since the first one was kind of a bust. But I'm going to try it again. Make sure I get paint from the top or the bottom. And I had a pink. I love pink. I wear lots of pink and purple. Just can't help myself. I'm going to rock it up and down. There. That turned out a little better. Now you might say it doesn't really look like flowers yet in a May picture, but what's missing, let's see if I should do a little bit more. I'm going to try to make a different flower with um, some blue up here with this side of my marker. And then the other side's a little different. What color have I not used? Oh, I've got yellow, pink, purple, orange. I think I've got just about everything. But I will use um, some orange pink because I like pink. I'm using the other side because it's a little bit different. See, oh, it's not going all the way on there. There, it makes like a circle. I kind of like that because it has a hole in the bottom. So, I'm going to go all the way around. And the one thing that's missing that why I make these not look like flowers is because we don't have stems. So, I'm just using things that you have at home to do a craft. So, all right. So, we have some flowers. I'm not going to do any more. I don't really have time. But I want to show you the last thing I'm going to do is my Q-tips. 
These make great paintbrushes, and you might have these at home, or popsicle sticks. I'm using my green. I'm going to put some on my Q-tip, and then you can just sort of draw stems down, and write down the paper, so that these start looking connected to the ground. So I'm going to do it really quick, and there. And you can also use these Q-tips to make leaves, small leaves. There we go. See, I'm just putting a leaf there in some different spots. All right, quickly, quickly, so that you can see what this all looks like. And you get a nice May Day picture. And now the one thing that's missing, of course, is the ground, and you can do that with you. If you look down here, I'm trying to hold up and do it at the same time. I'm gonna make some grass. I'm doing it really fast, but you can take your time. You can also use real leaves to make a leaf. Just dip it in your paint. But I'm gonna show you that even, I'm home, and I don't have all my craft supplies. They're all at school. I take as much stuff as I can to school. And I just had a couple paints that I managed to make a May Day picture with items I found at home. And you can do that too. So that's a nice idea for today. Because today is May Day. And May Day is all about spring and flowers. And on my YouTube channel today, no, on my Looms message, I have... Um, a, a way to make a May Day basket. All right, so try that. Try to make a May Day picture. It turns out very nice with things you can find at home. So here's my things, my plate of things that I used. All right, so I kind of want to do our Jesus Lives one more time today because it is still Easter season. So we're going to close with that song really quick. And make sure I don't spill paint in my living room or on my piano. Okay, let's see if we can sing it, see if you know it. Jesus lives, Jesus lives today. He is Lord and he lives today. Jesus lives to show us the way. Jesus lives today. Jesus lives, Jesus lives today. In you and me, Jesus lives today. Jesus lives to show us the way. Jesus lives today. Jesus lives, Jesus lives today. Where there's love, Jesus lives today. Jesus lives to show us the way. Jesus lives today. Happy May Day, happy Easter season, and happy Friday. And I'll see you again, and I miss you, and I love you, and I, I look forward to seeing you all next week. Bye-bye.